Can you I was hear yourself? Just check. I can hear myself. Uh, legs, can you say something so I can see if you're... How are the subways there in Berlin? Very efficient. After living in L.A. for years, it's very nice not to have to go into an automobile. The, the public yeah. transport system actually works. So. Oh, how long did you live in L.A.? Oh, too long. <laughs> uh, I, I moved there when I was a teenager in '76, and then, uh, and then after, and I was there for a few years, and then I was in London, Austria, Egypt, and then I came back during this radio werewolf period from '84 to '90, and then then I went back and forth a little bit. But I've lived in Europe most of my uh, adult life now. Yeah. When did you first meet Charlie? Well, I wrote to him in 85 and then met him in 86 in San Quentin. And then we did our recording in April of 1988 for Charles Manson Superstar. That's the first time I did a formal interview with him. And then Did I you like him? him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, can, I consider him a friend. Absolutely. Uh -huh. I liked him. I cut him a lot of slack because he was in a very tense and, and awful situation. He could be very exasperating, but, you know, yeah, we had a friendship separately from what he did and our involvement working on this book and this film. Yeah, we had a, a real friendship. Mm -hmm. And I think to the degree that one could get to know him, and of course he was very guarded, you know, I think I did see a lot of the private Charlie the last thing I mentioned, too, about your book about the history of porn, that's a whole unexplored dimension of the Manson case, is that he was making porn since the late 50s, and I'm pretty sure he was continuing to in the 60s when he was out, and I think that has a lot to do with these supposedly vanished videos that Polanski and Victor Lowndes and Hugh Hefner were trading and buying pornography of celebrities going back to the 1920s. And, and I, th I think it was tied into extortion and trying to blackmail celebrities. And of course, the mafia, as you know from your book, pretty much controlled the porn. Yeah, industry at that time. yeah. I think Andy Warhol tried to buy the porn tapes, but right. uh, they, never, they never surfaced. Well, they've never surfaced, but I mean, I've got all kinds of detailed reports, for instance, from Connie Kresge, who was a playboy, playmate of 1969. She was the girlfriend of Victor Lowndes, who was Polanski's mentor and, you know, the right-hand man of Hugh Hefner. Yeah. And when I went to L.A. in 2019 to show my film Charles Manson Superstar, a friend of mm -hmm. Connie Kresge, also tied into the Playboy. She was a bunny, contacted me because she had read the last edition of my book. And she said that Polanski, Victor Lowndes, and other celebrities had this very state-of-the-art video system. Robert Evans, when uh, Polanski did Rosemary's Baby, gave him as a present, and he actually used it for Rosemary's Baby, like to, he was one of the first directors to use video to do rehearsals. He uh -huh. used it to make private porn because very few people had this video system. So he filmed Sharon Tate with celebrities. Victor Lowndes filmed himself with other famous actresses and models. And Hefner had this huge collection of it. So apparently they were trading. And like this wasn't just stuff that was filmed in the 60s at Cielo Drive and Chateau Marmont is apparently where a lot of this was filmed, according to... Uh -huh. Jean Gutowski, because Tate and Polanski lived at Chateau Marmont before they moved right. to Cielo Drive. And a lot of this orgiastic activity apparently went on there. But Hefner like, collected, and, and Lowndes collected porn going back to like Joan Crawford giving a blowjob, stuff like that. And yeah. the interesting thing, some of the mob figures that Charlie knew were involved with an extortion ring. You know the Johnny Stompinato case, Lana Turner's boyfriend? Yes, yes. He he was apparently a hustler. Like he, he like met famous stars, men and women, would pay him to have sex with them. 
and he would have he would meet them in hotel rooms that had secret cameras, and they the mob, Mickey Cohen, and people like that, and yeah. and and Sidney Korshak, who was very instrumental in helping Polanski and Robert Evans cover up <coughs> mafia connections to Cielo Drive and the La Biancas and all that. He would present celebrities with these tape, like, look, we have this, so you got to pay us, or you have to do whatever we want. Like Sammy Davis Jr. and Kim Novak yeah. apparently were filmed by Harry Cohn, paid the mob to do that. And also Rudy Altabelli appears to have been involved with this blackmailing operation. And, I, and Charlie knew him much better than you would know from the uh, from his testimony, which was pretty much, you know, Bugliosi forced We spent him. a lot of time with Rudy Altabelli. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, he's much more involved with it than he ever said. A guy named Did you meet a guy named Bob Esty? No. Bob Esty lived with Rudy. He was a flamboyantly gay guy who basically invented disco, which is a horrible thing to invent, but he did. <laughs> and, um, yeah. But because he was part of this gay circle that hung out at Cielo Drive, he told me stuff that Altabelli told him in confidence that Tex, you know, he knew Tex very well. Tex stayed there with Melcher. Tex was involved with drug dealing with Melcher. Melcher needed money desperately, so when Melcher would go out of town, Watson would stay at the house and be dealing acid from the living room. Charlie had heard of Altabelli, he told me, even in San Francisco in 1967 from a mafia guy named Ray Lee who owned nightclubs in San Francisco. This guy, Frankie Carbo, had recommended Charlie to these North Beach mafia-owned nightclubs as a singer. And this guy told him, there's a guy in L.A. named Rudy Altabelli that you can trust. And so he knew of him even before Dennis Wilson introduced him. And Altabelli, he had a little film company called Cottage Films, like his guest house was the cottage. Yeah. He made gay loops. No, yeah. Nothing nothing horrendous or, or uh, bestiality or that kind of thing. Yeah, but at yeah. that time, it was illegal. Yeah. And Charlie was involved in gay pornography. He told me that because apparently he could maintain an erection very long, he was in, you know, a big commodity. He met people at Universal Studios, closeted gay men who asked him to be in porno movies. Who was the star that Charlie supposedly had sex with at Universal? Oh, Peter Falk. Charlie actually had sex with Peter Falk in some kind of S&M Thing. Peter Falk admitted this to a uh, gay theatrical producer in Fire Island. I have a quote from him. He said, uh, I, I did the crazy fucker. And this guy said, huh, what are you talking about? And so Falk admitted that he met Charlie on the Universal lot when he was making the universe, when he was making the pilot for Columbo. In uh, you know, and the timing works out. Robert Conrad, the guy who was in Wild Wild West, he paid Charlie to have sex with him on the Universal lot, and there were others. I mean, Charlie was sometimes discreet. There was this guy who picked him up because he was he parked in Cary Grant's parking space, and the guy was Cary Grant's lover, and he introduced him to closeted gay men, and Charlie was like rough trade, you know, people that like, because he was a convict, he, he had some. Yeah. So he did some kind of gay pornography, and I don't know how exactly it connected to Altabelli, but they were both involved with it. 